All right, welcome to another video, and, and as you can see, we have a tripod now, like an actual tripod, so this will be easier to film. But today we're going to be attempting to build and get working the fastest Windows 98 machine I can build. So as a base system here, we have a Core 2 Quad E, I think this is in a Core 2 Quad Q... 8200 at like 2 gigahertz we have you can't see it but I can show you maybe yeah we have a 500 gigabyte SATA hard drive at the top we have a SATA DVD ROM drive we have 4 gigabytes of RAM but this computer has no graphics card so what are we gonna be using for graphics Windows 98 is very picky about what graphics cards it can use because of NVIDIA's drivers and also AMD's drivers stopped being developed for 98 a long time ago. So the best graphics card I have for Windows 98 is this. This is a PCI Express NVIDIA GeForce 6800. It's not a 6800 Ultra. But it's certainly way better than an FX200, which is what I've been using for years on my main Windows 98 machine. So that just installs in this slot like this. Maybe. Uh oh, hang on. Hold on. Okay, there. Now. What else does this need? Well, obviously, it needs a floppy drive. So, I have a floppy drive plugged in down here. And it goes right there to the floppy drive. It's also got 4 gigabytes of RAM. Which is a lot of RAM for Windows 98. But, we can use it. Now, the other thing it needs is Windows 98 compatible sound. Originally, this build was using one of these... HP Reptide OEM things, but these are just absolutely fucking unreliable pieces of shit. So, I had no choice but to yank the Sound Blaster Live out of my primary Pentium 4 based Windows 98 machine for this build. Eventually, I'm probably gonna get an Odigy 2 ZS for this machine, but for right now, this is the best we got. So, this literally just installs like any other PCI card. You just plug it in like this. And then, oh, and also we have to plug in this uh, fan header. So the fan header just plugs into the motherboard right there. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. So, I'm going to put the side panel back on this thing. And then we'll get started filming the setup and installation process. And then we get to the fun part. Alright, so now we have positioned the tripod over to where we're going to run the computer. So, let's turn it on. So, the first thing we have to do in order to install Windows 98 on a... Because this is pure SATA. This is a pure SATA machine, there's no... Well, there is IDE, but just for fun, we're not going to use the IDE. So in order to do that, we actually have to go into the BIOS. And let me see if I can monitor a little easier to see. There we go. Okay, so if we come down here to storage configuration in this board, which is an ASUS P5QSE2, we have to set the SATA operation mode to AHCI, or else it won't work. So we set it to AHCI, and if we check our AHCI configuration, we have a hard disk, and we have a CD-ROM. Hard disk is a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar kind of thing. Now the next step is we're going to need some floppy disks. This, despite what it says, is a Windows 98 boot disk. So we're going to boot this disk 
by plugging it in to the floppy drive. And I don't actually need to change anything, so we can just let that boot. I also need to get my uh, my Windows 98 CD-ROM ready to go. As you can see, this is a special CD-ROM driver that allows us to use AHCI-enabled uh, CD-ROM drives under DOS. So if we check our C drive, I have already spared you the time and formatted this hard drive. So we can make two folders, or we can make a folder, and we're going to call it CD-ROM. Then we are going to copy our Windows 98 source files to this folder. So we put the disk in the drive, and we switch to I believe it's E, we type dir, retry, 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 cd win98, copy, start at star to the cd, cd rom folder. Hopefully this video was better framed than my last one because we have an actual like real tripod That's because previously for reference. I used a tiny tripod and I fit it Right in this space right here in front of the keyboard, which is not a lot of space so obviously That really severely limited my recording options, but now we have an actual tripod positioned in front of the table so yeah we'll just gotta wait for this to finish copying first because then we also have to do something strange with our memory because we have four gigabytes of RAM in this computer and Windows 98 craps out and you have that much RAM so what we're gonna do is we're gonna type a config.sys in the root of the C drive and wait for A to load off the floppy disk. We're gonna type device equals C limit mem dot sys. I'll limit it to say 420 megabytes because that's funny. Then we simply copy the special limit mem dot sys driver off the floppy disk. And there we go. Now I can take the disk out of the CD-ROM drive, oops, put it back in its little sleeve, make sure I can read the little note that has the product key on it for later, and we can just CD, CD-ROM, and run through the setup, which I will probably speed up in post, because this is going to take a hot minute. Alright, so I know I said I'd speed this up, but there's actually another step we have to do here. Because we are installing our chipset drivers now. So if we go to the INF folder on this floppy disk, we have 30 INF files created by the Lone Crusader, whose, er, who, that these files are used for, uh, installing the Intel IHC-10 chipset onto... Windows 98. We're not gonna get like actual support like I don't think the PCI Express bus is gonna be as fast as it would be if we actually had the correct drivers, but it's still good enough. So once we have these installed, we can proceed with the rest of the installation, which let me get the disk out, which I will just speed back up because this is gonna take a hot minute.
All right. Where were we? Oh yeah, we had just installed this. So first, obviously, we always delete MSN because MSN is useless. Now, here I have a CD full of stuff that we're gonna use later. But first, we just need 7-zip from it. Because 7-zip is important for installing drivers. Oh, wait, shit, I don't have the... Okay, right, I forgot. So, the next thing we need, is we need this disc, which is unlabeled, but has some very important stuff on it. So, we stick it in the drive, and then we can navigate to the floppy drive. Well, actually, we could probably do it like this. Okay. Did it just open twice? What is this? No. Okay. So... We have three files, a folder, and two files. These two files are going to be important later, so we can copy those to the desktop. Which, that, that's, that's cool. Okay, so we'll go over what these files do first, or do later, but you notice there is a folder called SATA on the floppy disk. We're going to delete this too. Get out of here. Ah, I did not want to restart my computer. We'll be back when this thing boots back up. Okay, that was a stupid mistake, but we're back. So there is a folder on the floppy called SATA. And that, if we check our performance, you can see that we're using compatibility mode because Windows doesn't have drivers for our hard disk, so it's using DOS to access it, which is very slow. However, if we come into a device manager, when we look here, we have this PCI card device listed. So we can go down the properties, and we are going to install the driver, which is on the floppy at a SATA. We can click next. And as you can see, it found the standard 6 port PCI AHCI controller. So we can click next, and this is going to take a second, because it's going to install every single port out of our six SATA ports on our motherboard. Okay, it has installed the device. So now if we look, we have six AHCI ports, so we can actually take a the, 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 this floppy out, this one, and just put it somewhere for safekeeping later. Okay, and now we have to reboot the computer. So, we'll be back after it reboots. Alright, we have booted back into Windows. So now, if we check our device manager, you can see in our hard disk controller, we have all of our AHCI ports working fine. And if we check our disk drives, Boom, there's our Western Digital Hard Drive. But also, uh, if we look at the CD-ROM tab, here is our DVD drive. So now if we go to my computer, maybe, come on, spin up the disk, there we go. Look, we have our CD-ROM. And we can go to the support folder, and here's 7-zip. So we can just install 7-zip. Which is cool. So then we can just take the disc out for now because we're not actually need it for a while. The next problem comes in when we have to copy the rest of the drivers to the machine, which are all on this flash drive, which is what N USB is for. We can simply install a driver and then also we need to this actually comes with a USB 2.0 driver, so we need to uninstall this first USB serial bus device and restart. And I'll actually let you see the boot process just to show you how fast this thing boots up on this computer because it boots insanely quickly. As you can see, P5 QSE2 by ASUS. It's a really good board. This used to be my very, this used to be my main computer, 
a lot of the really, really, really old videos on this channel were edited on that computer. And as you can see, PCI Universal Serial Bus, it's going to install it. Standard PCI to USB enhanced controller. If we search for the drivers, it'll find a driver for it and in USB 2.inf. And then it's going to find the USB 2 root hub. And now the front USB ports are USB 2 enabled. But first, we have to unplug the mouse. So we unplug the mouse, and then we plug it into the front USB port. Because we are going to install the back USB ports. Which is as easy as reinstalling a driver, clicking next, clicking next, clicking next, clicking next, next, close. And if we didn't do that, we would have froze the entire system. Because the, when it installs the USB 2.0 root hub, it resets all the devices, including our keyboard. So that's just really easy to reinstall. And now we have USB 2.0 drivers installed for maximum speed. So I'm gonna plug the mouse back in really quick here, or into the back, because I don't like having it plugged in front because I think it's stupid. Oh, come on. There we go. And then we can just plug in my USB thumb drive into the front USB port. As you can see, new hardware found, mass storage. Then we click next, 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 USB store to INF, next, finish. And then it's going to find a whole bunch of other shit, which will let us actually access our device. So then, it should be, yep, there it is, removable disk F. So there's a couple of things on here that we're going to need. We're going to need this. Oh, get that off of there. Uh, we're gonna need this NVIDIA driver. And then scroll down and find the IDG2 ZS. And then we can just copy all of these to the desktop. Alright, then we can drag these files around a little bit. Oh, where did that go? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes this, this IBM red wheel mouse kind of acts up. And we can just eject the thumbstick. Okay, let me pull it out. Alright, so. This Auto G2 driver is what we're going to be installing first, because... I did try the actual Sound Blaster Live drivers, but the VXD drivers did not work, and the WDM drivers crap out when you install the RAM patch. So these are provided by Phil's Computer Lab. So we can just go through each folder. We're going to pick VXD and click OK. And then this is going to take a hot minute. So, I'm going to speed this up and post properly. Okay, as you can see, we have to reboot the computer. So, we're going to cut the tape and come back when we have rebooted the machine. Alright, you could not hear that, but I can assure you we have functioning audio here. In fact, let me shuffle around a couple of these desktop icons, and then if we click on the little speaker, we can turn it up. Uh, I think I have to... Yeah, okay. That's definitely what the problem is. I don't need the wine in balance. There, that should do the trick. Uh, 
All right, cool. We now have audio. Uh, let me just check to see what else we have to install. Uh, I think we do need Audio HQ, so that's just like a quick two-second install. Yep, done. Uh, I'm pretty sure we need this too, so... We need that too. Uh, we don't need the DOS drivers because those are stupid. Because this is not this is not a DOS machine at all. This is way too fast to be a DOS machine. Okay, next up, we're going to install the video drivers. So in order to do that, if we just use NVIDIA setup program, it will violently explode because this machine is obviously different. So we can delete this exe. Okay, so to install the video drivers, we go to properties, device manager, and first we uninstall the standard display adapter. And we tell it no. Then we double click the standard PCI graphics adapter, come up here to driver, we go update, next, display a list, and we want have disk, and we browse to the location of our driver, which is C, Windows, Desktop, and NVAGP. And now we have a list of drivers, in our case, or in this case, we have a GeForce 6800. So we click it, and then we click OK. And we hit yes, yes, finish, and then we gotta reboot the computer. Alright, so we're still in 16 colors because we have to activate the graphics driver. To do that, we come to this control panel, and we change the color depth to 16 bit. And we have to reboot the computer again. Oh my god. We'll be right back. Okay, so apparently we crashed trying to activate the graphics driver. So that's concerning. Hello? Oh, I don't know why it crashed, because look, we have color now. Okay, sure, whatever, Windows. I was kind of concerned that, that something would have broke, because this is very easy to break. Because Windows- Ah, uh, shut up. Nobody cares. Uh, this machine is extremely easy to break. It's kind of- It's just a little unstable. Anyway, let's crank that resolution up just a little bit higher. So hopefully you guys can still see. Yeah, okay, that's readable enough, probably. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Alright, then let's apply a desktop theme. So that can stop looking at this. My favorite theme is Windows 98. We can keep everything except... Or get rid of everything except the desktop wallpaper and the mouse pointers. Huzzah! It's beautiful. Now, the last thing we have to install is this. This is actually straight up a driver for the onboard LAN on this motherboard. Because for some reason, Realtek decided to push a driver for this, for this chipset. It's a Realtek 8111C chipset. Where the fuck is the desktop folder? Windows, uh, desktop. Where the fuck did the desktop go? Oh, wait, I'm stupid. It's right here. As you can see, it picks it up just fine. So you can hit next. I, I dearly hope you can read this text. Let me see if I can't focus that. Alright, that's a little better. Oh my god, I have to reboot my computer again. We'll be right back. Alright, so now as you can tell, we have network because it installed the Microsoft Network Client. So we can just press enter. And now we are at a fully installed desktop. We can connect to the network using the network connection wizard 
Actually, yes, I do want to do that because we're gonna download some music just to prove to you that this sound card works good. So if we go to my local server and pick out some music, I think I have some good stuff. Yeah, we'll play. Oh, oops. I need to save that as my documents mods. It's not an HTML document. It's a fucking mod file dot mod. Oh, right. I need to enable the correct view options. So that would be show all files and don't hide file extensions. There we go. That's better. And then we can simply download a mod player. And we can close this and put a shortcut this on my desktop. Call it mod mod plug player. And we can simply open the mod file we just downloaded. That is not at all what it's called. Hang on, I gotta fucking. I don't know why Internet Explorer insists on downloading this as a freaking HTM document. It is, in fact, not an HTM document. So then we can just open this. And as you can hear, the sound works perfectly. And that's enough of that for now, because the next thing we have to do is we have to fully update and patch Windows 98. And to do that, we have everything on the combo disk here. Now, I would use a newer version of what we're about to use here, which is the unofficial service pack 3 for Windows 98, but uh, I've had problems with version 6.66, so this is a slightly older version that we're actually going to copy to my second hard drive. Ah, actually, nah. We'll just run it from here. That's fine. As you can see, it takes a little bit to extract, which is why I was debating copy it, copying it from my hard drive, but you know what? It's fine. So this is just going to go along and extract to the temp folder. Ba -ba, hurry up. I don't have time for this. I'm going to run out of record time on my iPhone 5S. Because, oh yeah, I found out this thing actually records 1080p, so that's cool. I'm probably going to start rendering 1080p content now. Instead of 720. So, X out of that. And then we can do main updates core system files. Uh, we want animated. So basically, this will just give us a list of options of what we want. We're definitely getting the core system updates, but we can pick other things that we'd want, like the front page express, or how about iExpress. We can also get net meeting and the management console. The paint graphics filters, because why not? Uh, this won't work. We could probably get the OAL viewer performance tricks, remote desktop client, time zone update. Oh, my battery. Oh dear. I need to plug it in. I need to plug in my camera before it dies. Hang on. Come on, where is it? There it is. Alright, there. We are now charging. So we can also get true type fonts, true type shell exception, and tweak UI, uninstall the Java virtual machine. The rest of this crap doesn't matter. I'll I'll take Wintop. And then we can just click OK. And I'll probably speed this up post because it's gonna take a hot minute to install all these updates. And we have to reboot the computer, so uh, we'll be back after this thing freaking reboots. Alright, welcome back to Windows, except there's one problem that we have to deal with, and that's the unofficial, this version of the unofficial service pack 
Breaks Explorer. But luckily, we can fix that by simply updating uh, Internet Explorer. I don't know why it does this. And if you follow the help directions advice to install IE6 or I uh, do an updated version of IE6 first, you will actually brick your system with no other way to repair it and it's absolutely horrible. I do not like it. It's terrible. So we can just pick a bunch of options here. Like I definitely want OE6 and the new Windows Media Player. Uh, Windows Media Player Codex, Vector Art, Macromedia Flash Player, additional web fonts, I like fonts, and click next. And I'm going to speed this up in post, because it's just an installer, and if I don't speed it up in post, y'all will be angry at me for making long videos. Or, not angry, just kind of upset that I made a long video that's padded out with loading screens. Oh shit, it's already done. Okay, so this is gonna reboot. I'll just leave this booted and probably speed it up in post because it's, it's so fast anyway, it doesn't even matter. And the last thing we have to install from the unofficial service pack is DX9. So if we come over here, oh, I just froze it. Never mind, we're back. So we can come here, support, and we can open this. Wait for it to re extract. Uh, there's a couple other problems that we'll go into when we get there, but first we gotta like fully update this and then we gotta install the cool stuff like uh, Kernel EX because oh boy, Kernel EX is gonna be one hell of a show. Oh come on, finish extracting already. I ain't got all day Windows 98 unofficial service pack 3. Okay, and we can close this. And we can pick the, the DirectX runtime from right here. That's the only thing we're going to install is the DX9 runtime. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have the reboot again. So I'm gonna cut this reboot and we'll be back when it's rebooted. Alright, welcome back to after the reboot again, but before we install Kernel X, we're gonna copy some stuff off of this USB flash drive. So we gotta plug it into the computer, and it's plugged in, so in theory, now I should just be able to go to F. And we're going to go into this, we're going to grab this folder, and we're going to paste it to my desktop. Which is, it's going to take a moment to install, so, yeah. Well, I'll probably speed this copy up and post. Okay, that's been copied off. And also what we're going to copy is this. This is a copy of Java 1.8. For, well, technically it's not for Windows 98, but it runs on Windows 98, and that's what's cool about it. So we'll put this over here for now, and then we can also just delete these two files. Yep. I can also delete this. Yep. And then I can eject the thumbstick. Oh, wait, you know what? You know what we need to do first? See, this PC has 4 gigabytes of RAM on it, but... Right now, because of Windows, the fact Windows 98 explodes on over 1 gigabyte of RAM, we limited it to 420 megabytes of RAM. But, we're going to remove that limitation. So, first things first, we're going to, we're going to keep this in case we need it later. And then we're going to open our config.sys with notepad. 
and we're gonna just delete this line and then save the file so then the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna boot this floppy disk so slide it in and then we're going to restart the PC and we'll be back so under normal circumstances we just run patch mem however in this specific configuration we actually need to apply the M switch which according to the manual fixes VXD initialization errors which is what I was dealing with which is what I was doing with before I don't know why it does that it's probably some weird Windows 98 issue but just by using patch mem dash dash M or move VXD data above 16 megabytes it'll just work so I need to press delete anyway as you can see we booted back up and now if we check my my computer properties we have all the RAM but it has no idea what a processor is that's where this file comes in if we hang on if we place this file in C Windows show files system which is right here if we replace if we put this file into here we say yes and then we right click my computer boom Intel core 2 quad CPU so now we have three gigs of RAM total now we can go ahead and begin the process of installing stuff like kernel EX so here's kernel EX, you can double click it, hit next, I agree, uh, enable all cur uh, kernel EX extensions for all applications, and we'd want to tell it I want to reboot later. Now I have some kext beta extensions here, which are kind of out of date, but they're still good enough. So you can take these and go to Windows, kernel EX, which is right there, copy this path. And then extract, yes, and I believe we have to import this registry file. Okay, then the next step is in this folder, there's actually some more kernel EX stuff in here. So we can just wait. Is this litter? Oh, I don't. No, no, wait. No, 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 no. Stop. I don't have printer installed. So we can just move all this shit in there. All right. And then the next thing we have to install before we reboot. We're just doing all this before we reboot. Is we have to install Kex Dub, which is relatively easy to install. You just drag this in, drag this, and also this, and then we gotta copy this file name. And then we gotta go to core.ini, which is this, open it, scroll down, find base, and then paste in our file name, change it to a lowercase k, and add a comma, and then simply copy paste this. And then if we scroll to the bottom here, we can just add it right here too. And hit save. And next up we can help it doing this again. And we can simply reboot the computer. Welcome back to Windows 98. So if you see this, that means we're all good and all installed. And to verify that, I actually have a file on this CD-ROM that we can use to test. If we go here and then we go Minecraft, we have a copy of Java 6, which only installs under kernel EX. In theory. Come on. Install. You can do it. It's gonna take a moment to load off the DVD. It's not a DVD, it's a CD, I don't know what I'm talking about. I think I'm just really tired today. 
Yesterday I didn't sleep well. So yeah, that was terrible. Alright. This is not a supported platform. I don't care. We can accept the agreement. And... Install. So now we don't actually need the combo disc anymore. So we can just take that shit out. Come on. Give me the disc. Give me the disc. Thank you. Alright, disc has been taken out. So then the next thing for this party trick is we go in here and we have to install .NET Framework to Oh no, wait, no, wait, no, 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 hang on. Uh oh. Oh no, I just realized I think I screwed up the installation process. Disable kernel EX. Don't Normally... Okay, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be fine, probably. Okay, I hope this actually works, otherwise we're gonna have to change course. Oh dear. Installing, oh, uh, no. or running whatever engine is. Oh. Okay, it's done. And then next, there's this Visual C++ 2008. Yep. Okay, cool. And then we can go to... What the hell was that? Is my audio driver okay? Yeah? Okay, I, I don't know what just happened. So, we're gonna actually take this folder, cut, we're gonna put it into my program files directory. And we're gonna open it, and we're gonna go to app Firefox. And then the next thing we gotta do we gotta go to XP DLLs and move all of these DLLs into here. Then we go back here to the XP2 or XP SP2 DLLs and move all these DLLs into here. Then we can send to desktop create shortcut and then we name it to be Firefox 48. And then we have to enable kernel EX to run with XP SP3 and then if we double click it should come up in a moment and it does don't import anything and here it is here's Firefox 48 and just to prove to you that this is reasonable or that it is Firefox 48 here it is, it reports Firefox 48.0.2, and we can go to Google, google.com, no thanks, let's go get Draga1, let's play one of his videos just to prove that this is, that this computer is fast enough under Windows 98 to play a YouTube video, maybe. Uh what is this? New welcome components. It's probably fine. And then we can go to the videos tab. Maybe. Yeah, I I like watching Durago one. I wish he'd upload more, but it's been almost a year since his last upload and it's making me kinda sad. Anyway. We can put on one of his videos, just to show to you that it does indeed work. This is an ad. This is not his video. There's no audio, because I think we installed the VXD drivers. It might work if we use the, um... If we use the WDM drivers, but I like the VXD drivers better, so... As you can see, it's plenty smooth very good for watching YouTube videos so yeah we can just close this now I'm gonna put this disc back and we'll get started to some of the problems that this mach machine has so with a Windows 98 machine this good what would you want to play on it well how about something like say an Andreas well we run into a bit of a snag here because if we put if we put the game in this drive 
it'll try and run the autoplay, but there's a little problem with San Andreas's autoplay on this machine. <laughs> Which you'll see momentarily once the disc mounts. Yep. It consistently blue screens. I don't know why, but it just does. And you have to press the reset button. Before we get to the main course, let's try something a little strange. I have a copy of the Adobe Creative Suite 2 on this flash drive that we might be able... We're gonna download a program. It's called... So, they... Mojang, or Microsoft, whoever, killed the old Minecraft launcher. So that's what this is a replacement for. This is a custom handcrafted launcher by me for playing Minecraft on Windows 98. It has no release yet, but it will probably get released as soon as I get back to finishing it because I am extremely lazy. So let's open here and make a new folder. We'll call it Minecraft. We could just open that, and then, in order to use it correctly, you have to open a uh, command. We're going to do Java, and J-A-R, and then the name of the jar file we downloaded. That'll take a hot minute, and here we are. And then we can simply browse to my Minecraft folder, and we're going to... Pick the newest version I can run, which is 1.12.2, enter in a name, put in me, and then we can launch the game. And this will be down. Okay, so we're probably gonna cut out the entire segment with Photoshop, because also I ran out of record I ran out of recording time. So yeah, screw that. Instead, we're going to go and play Minecraft on here. So we have Minecraft out bat, but we need to deal with this first. Because this is this is Java 1.8, and if we're going to play Minecraft 1.12.2, we need Java 8. So in here, we can just rename this to Java 8. And then cut this entire folder. We'll put it on the root of C. Just like that. Now, there's one problem, and that is we need to replace a DLL. So I can quickly do that by going to 192.168.1 files, scrolling down, or going to 98. And we go this file, psapi.dll. And then we can, we have to put this into the kernel ex folder, which is somewhere in here. Hello, there it is. So the original PSAPI is right there. So we can call it PSAPI underscore old. And we can just drag this one in. And then we need to edit this batch file. This batch file contains the launch arguments from the Minecraft that tried the launch but failed miserably. So we can go see Java 8 bin java.exe and then we have to change this to be like 850 megabytes. File save. And then we should just be able to double click this batch file and it should just launch. Maybe. We'll find out in a moment. Oh, yep, as you can see, Java 8 is working. Here's our Minecraft. So, I can't really play many games on here just because they're all kind of broken, which is fine, I guess. Old graphics card detected. I don't know why it's being like this. Don't I have my color depth up all the way? Oh, I don't. Okay, let me fix my color depth real fast. That should be a quick fix, and it is. And then we can just 
rerun the batch script here. So because we have a half decent graphics card, we should be able to realistically play this pretty well. Potentially. I have to reduce a couple of graphics settings because otherwise it's just gonna run like poop. But then we can make the window bigger. And we can reduce some of our graphics settings. Like six. We turn off smooth lighting. That'll give us the biggest boost. And we can just make a new world here and we'll call it YouTube. YouTube. YouTube.com. Alright, so we have generated a world. It'll just take a hot minute because, yeah, it's still not the quickest thing on the planet. Cows. So, it's lagging really badly right now, but give it a second. And it'll stop lagging once we're done generating the world. I need to turn off auto jump. I hate auto jump. I, I need to reduce my render distance a little bit more so I can have more FPS now. It's just a little laggy, but that's okay. Let me eject this thumbstick here really quickly. That might help a little bit. Come on. Spit it out. Cool. If we stand still and don't move too much, you can see we're getting pretty good FP FPS. We can break 60 FPS on my GeForce 6800, which is honestly not too bad. Very playable. It's just a little kind of shitty sometimes, although that's probably because we're forcing a single threaded operating system to handle both the game and the um and like rendering everything so we can like blow this guy's house up too that'd be pretty cool good way to end the video off since i have i'm cutting out the entire photoshop segment <laughs> probably because that will not work oh is this a zombie village probably whatever I don't care. But yeah, as you can tell, this Windows 98 machine is the most overkill thing I can build, and it shines in running modern games and apps when the installers don't crash. But that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. Sorry that this video was kind of a disaster, and yeah, see you next time.